All right, now let's go back to our main text over here. So he had in his hand a little book, whatever that is, right? Well, the thing is this. What other book in Revelation seemed to match up with Jesus holding a little book? Revelation 5, remember? Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 5. Notice what he held in his, this is Jesus, we know that at Revelation 5, right? But Jesus, what was he holding that book? Revelation 5 verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. But verse 5, it's Jesus who was able to open the book and loose the seven seals. See that? So that's why our best guess could be that this little book, I mentioned to you before that in Revelation 5, that black book would be referring to the book of prophecy, Revelation. Because Revelation is part of the Bible, you could also say that the book would be referring to the Bible as well. So then, it would make sense then about these two identities when you keep reading at Revelation chapter 10 again. Go to Revelation 10, verse 3. Revelation chapter 10, we'll read verse 3. And cried with a loud voice. So Jesus is crying with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. Wait a minute. So he's crying out like a lion would roar. Keep your hand here. Go back to Revelation 5 again. Revelation 5, verse 5. Notice that when Jesus held the book, what is he called? Revelation 5, 5. Oh, that's good. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So in Revelation 5, 5, you'll notice that this really matches up with Revelation chapter 10, verse 3 then, and 1 and 2, that this has to be Jesus Christ then. So uh, you notice that at the beginning I mentioned that uh, I wasn't quite sure about the identities because I always give a benefit of the doubt. But it seems very likely, though, we can see that. It seems very likely, looking at all the other verses at Revelation, the little book would be, for, would be referring to the book of end times prophecy, Revelation, or you could say the Bible, and then this, the, the angel over here at chapter 10, verse 1, would be referring to the angel of the Lord or Jesus Christ in his pre-incarnate form. Now, what's also pretty interesting over here is that it says, and when he had cried. So when he cries out at verse 3, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now remember, he had the book that was with seven seals, right? Now, what's kind of interesting, if I recall, let's go look at Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. Then the, it seems like the evidence can build up a little more and more and more. If it has the seven seals over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If it has the seven seals over here, it says that when he cried out, Seven thunders uttered their voices. Look at each seal and each thunder came out, it looks like. Yeah. Revelation 6, 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. See that? When he opens one of the seals. And I heard as it were the noise of what? Thunder. thunder. Boom, like that. Wow. So seven thunders, right? Couldn't be, it could be referring to the seven seals then over here. How we see that is looking only within the book of Revelation as well, from the context of Revelation, really seems to show that the evidence. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go back to Revelation chapter 10 again. What's even more, uh, which, which really shows that the thunders could match the seals is verse 4. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, so that matches with Revelation 6.1, the thunder... Cries, uh, uh, gives a noise of thunder, but it's a voice. 
when the seal is open. But look at this. I was about to write, so John was about to write the voice of the seven thunder, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, but somebody speaks from heaven telling John, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered. Wait a minute, the seven thunders are uh, cut loose when the seals were cut loose, right? So it shows a connection here with the thunder and seal. So this seems to really show that this little book can match, could be referring to Revelation 5, that book. So it really seems to show that, that there's a connection here. Now notice what happens when the seven thunders utter their voice, John's going to write it, but then some voice from heaven tells him, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. But the voice from heaven tells John, when these seven thunders uh, utter their voice, don't write them down, seal them up. So they were unwritten, they're anonymous. So then we come across then, if this thinking is true, that the thunder is connected to the seal and it's referring to that same black book of Revelation chapter 5 and 6, then wait a minute, didn't Revelation 6, John wrote it down? Yeah, he wrote down what the thunder uttered, right? So then what's going on over here? So then what could be going on is this, is that this is a nice idea, but it could be wrong. <laughs> so that's one. Secondly, what it could be referring to is pretty more simple than you think. It does not mean that when the seal is loose that uh, the thunder and voice has to come out just one time and that's it. It could be that any time he opens a seal, the voice can come out. If he seals it up, then the thunder won't utter the voice anymore. Who's to say that it only happens one time, right? So it could be that in Revelation 5 and 6, he wrote it down, but then when it came to Revelation 10, then God said, no, don't write that part down. So that's also possible too. Or a third thing, which is why I gave the benefit of the doubt. If the identity and the book is different, another explanation could be this, which is possible. Even though there's a strong reference to Jesus Christ, it may not necessarily be Jesus Christ right here. It could be a different angel here who is very similar to Jesus Christ with a book that's very similar to the book at Revelation 5. So the angel and book are similar to Christ and the Bible. You might say, well, I find that hard to believe. No, not really, because the reason why is this, is because didn't the Bible say that uh, when 1 John chapter 3, that we're going to be like Jesus Christ? Yeah, so he's going to have a copy an imitate where our body's going to be transformed like Jesus Christ. See, that's going to be, man, you talk about humbling, right? Right there. Why a wretch like you and God give you that resurrected body like Jesus Christ? See, so it's a, so it's so similar to Jesus Christ, but we are not actually Jesus Christ himself. Christians, we are not Jesus Christ himself, but we are known as the what? Body of Christ. See that? That is very possible throughout Scripture. Uh, not only that, there were so many references about King David where it's so close to Jesus Christ a lot. Yeah. So a lot of people, there are some verses where it's possible you might confuse where God is talking about King David that it could be referring to the Messiah, Jesus, instead. Yeah. In, as a matter of fact, in the millennium, Jesus is not just the Messiah that will claim his ownership and throne. There has to be King David as well, which is very interesting. That's why a lot of prophecies that David quoted when he's talking about his, himself, it just transitions and switches to Jesus a lot of times. Interesting, right? Yeah. Your God, that book is some fascinating, Amen. Amen. powerful book. Yeah. All right? This book is not boring. If someone tells you that the book is boring, then he or she is boring, yeah. okay? Yeah. And so much more than that. <laughs> so this is fascinating about Jesus Christ. Another thing is this, is that this could be referring to then to possibly, possibly, Referring to Revelation chapter 12 then. Go to Revelation 12. So
So you'll notice that this similarity of Jesus Christ is coming out, notice right here, in Revelation 12 in the tribulation timeline, which is intensely interesting. Revelation 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Uh, skip down to the middle, middle of verse 4. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now look at this. This is very similar to Jesus at verse 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So actually what's very interesting is that, uh, I'll explain it more when we hit Revelation chapter 12, but I think the majority of Bible-believing preachers, they'll mention here that this is referring to Jesus born from Israel, and then he ascended back up to heaven. But there's a new trend coming out now among Bible-believing preachers where they, be where they think that this is in the middle of the tribulation, and that this man-child that is born from Israel is very similar to the Savior, but he's not the same as the Savior, Jesus Christ. He's just another, he's just a Savior. So uh, there are uh, teachings out there that it could be referring to King David that might pop out in the middle of the tribulation or some kind of great hero that would be, uh, take place in the middle of the tribulation, which is intensely interesting. Now, here's the thing. This is my point. My point is, is that in Revelation chapter 12, verses uh, 3 at 2, 5, if that does happen in the middle of the tribulation, this person could be the same person referring to Revelation 10. That's very similar to Jesus Christ. Oh, wow, man. So that could be Revelation 12. If that is talking about in the middle of the tribulation, mm -hmm. that this person who is very much like Jesus Christ shows up, it could be the same person referring to Revelation chapter 10. Or it could be something even more interesting. You're like, whoa, is, we're getting like deep, 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 deeper, like, whoa, like that. Yeah. All right, let's go back to Revelation chapter uh, 10. Okay, I'll, I'll explain it soon. I'll explain it real soon. You're like, whoa, where are you going to get at? Okay, this is going to get really interesting. Okay. 